Thank you, sir. And I hope uh, I'm audible. Yes, you are. Okay. Good evening, all. And it is a privilege to talk about uh, butterflies and that too during this auspicious month when we, the nation is celebrating the Big Butterfly Month. But uh, I have one hitch out here. When Sharon told me, don't you know, make people sleep and you love to make it a little bit interesting. And uh, he gave me this topic, the Nilgiris, I have for butterflies. Okay, this happens to be my karma on a lighter vein. And uh, my aim would be this. With due apology to John Muir, the mountains are calling and I must go. If I, at the end of this talk, if I, I make you people you know, think about the mountains are calling and I must go, then my duty is done. And I will work on while I can study incessantly. That would be an aim plus. So the Nilgiri is a heaven for butterflies. Yes, yes. Heaven for butterflies. In whose perspective? On From the butterfly's perspective or from human's perspective? Whether it is heaven, hell, let us see how it goes about. So the factors which make a place a heaven for butterflies Yes, uh, I was just wondering, you know, if there isn't any set uh, uh, rules or uh, definitions of what is heaven and what is hell. So when I was just thinking about it, I came up with certain factors which would be ideal or congenial for butterfly to survive. That might make that place a heaven for butterflies. So as I was going over it, location, yes, geographical location plays a very important role in making a place a heaven for butterflies or not. So is the vegetation and the climatic conditions. Documentation, yes, this is a little uh, tricky, like uh, the others are uh, standard, you know, we have no control over it, whether the, where it is, nail grease cannot be shifted from this place to another place. But however, documentation, yes, plays a very important role for making butterflies heaven. Now, case in point is that uh, the, Historians, you know, when they write, they give, uh, the, especially the uh, nature-related historians, they uh, uh, denote certain uh, landmarks where, uh, you know, certain species, as we all know, butterflies, uh, resident butterflies occupy only a very small space from which you can see. If you all have heard uh, Dr. Kalish talking about uh, Hesperidae, he was mentioning about a uh, yellow-breasted flat. Uh, of which uh, Ms. Larson told him to go uh, to Kalar and uh, look underneath that bridge and you will find it and he found it. See, that was simply because of documentation. So it was uh, like, you know, whenever we, uh, when we started this Winter Blight Association, we started reading history and we came up with this Venlock Bridge. And uh, we were all, as Sharon told you all, that I was also born and all my colleagues, you know, standing there is uh, Mr. Jeevat, you know, one among the founding members of the association. We went about looking for uh, these landmarks you know, and uh, we were really taken aback. Where is this Venlock Bridge? And it was right at our north, just below the Kunor. So documentation, yes, there was the uh, uh, large four-line, uh, uh, large four-line uh, blue uh, described from it. We didn't know that we wouldn't uh, be able to preserve it or conserve it. So document plays, documentation, scientific documentation plays a very important role in making butterfly heaven and minimal external difference. This is a very big uh, uh, factor, but again, it, it does play that, you know, 200 years back, nail grease is not the nail grease which is now. So external uh, disturbances, how far it uh, takes the toll, one has to analyze and assess. Yes, then the Preservation and conservation. Yes, if uh, there, are, there are people who are sensitive to butterflies, yes, it definitely would make it a heaven. With that small note, I will get into my task in hand, starting with history. Yes, history of uh, butterflies of the Nail Gis. We are lucky enough to have had 400 years of history, very, very beautifully documented, and uh, the precisely from the Nail Gris. Um, eight, in 1888, Mr. G.F. Hansen, a Britisher, uh, a planter from the Western Slopes, he was doing uh, cultivation there or he was working for some plantations and things like that. He took interest on uh, Lepidoptera and uh, 
that is where he studied his uh, butterflies, the western slopes uh, mainly. Of course, he had uh, traveled up to the northern slopes and the Seagull Guards and other things. He wrote a crisp paper, you know, very beautiful one. Even today, it is referred to. And uh, he went on uh, to describe two hundred, uh, I mean, uh, list out two hundred and seventy-five species in his paper. That is when everything, uh, you know, a very comprehensive paper it is. Next comes uh, none other than uh, Mark Alexander Winterblythe, who is an educationist uh, by profession, and he happened to be uh, the principal of the. Uh, then uh, St. George's home in KT, it's on the way to Uti from Pune, And uh, it is in his honor we have named our association as the Winter Flight Association. A very meticulous personality, I would say that. Now he had uh, documented species from the higher plateau around his own place in KT Valley and down in Kalar and the southern slopes. It is a must read paper for any butterfly lover or especially from the male race. Last but not the least, our own uh, Larsen Tauben had uh, a stint of his early childhood days in male race in Portagiri. He was educated there in a uh, Danish missionary uh, some from 54 to 59. Then he went on in his pursuit. But uh, the beauty is that uh, he took his interest in that early years in 54. And he comes back after 30 years when he was a renowned lepidopterist world over, especially in the Arabian region. That is where, where he did his uh, doctoral studies. And uh, he is very well known in the West African continent itself. So very uh, well-known personality as far as lepidoptera is concerned, our own contemporary. And uh, so much passion uh, all the our uh, South Indians have on this paper and on all his pursuits. Dr. Kalish insisted that we, if at all, we conduct a survey we conduct in his memory. So that has how uh, in 2018, Winter Blythe Association uh, flagship this first ever uh, butterfly survey of the Nilgris in October uh, 11 to 14. With that introduction to just about the history of butterflies in the Nilgris, I shall get on with the location of the this birthday. With due credit to the person who has made this, I took it from the net. Nilgiris lies in a very pivotal uh, position in uh, place in the uh, biodiversity rich so called uh, uh, hot spot, hottest of the hot spots of the Western Guards uh, to be what do you call uh, to be uh, separated with a very uh, uh, famous uh, geographical. Uh, uh, pass called the Palgat Gap. It lies just ahead of uh, north of Palgat Gap and south lies the Palni Hills as you can see. And uh, many of you all are aware that uh, species which occur uh, north of Palgat Gap very rarely occur in south. It is a wonder of nature and uh, geologists and naturalists who are uh, uh, professionals would be able to talk of it. But uh, that is the fact of life. Now coming to the district proper, this is the vegetation uh, map as per champion and set. My friend Jeevit would be the right person to talk about vegetation since he pursues his botanical studies. But however, for your knowledge or whoever is uh, aware of the vegetation of the district, this is how the district lies. The greenery is very rich in vegetation. So is, uh, don't uh, worry about this uh, reddish sort of thing. They are all very uh, good uh, jungle, you know, it is per se, it is uh, the tiger reserve, which is there on the northern side, Masinagudi and all that. I will, I will just for your uh, knowledge, uh, apart from the political uh, divisions, this is how we can also see from the butterfly point of view. South lies Kunur, Kunda, Kotagiri, you know, and up above on the higher plateau lies the Kodagaman. Udi, whatever you call it, and uh, you can see the blue uh, uh, patches are uh, the river in tracks or dams and you know reservoirs and all that. And the western side is full of evergreen patches, and uh, the uh, south is also very good. This is the higher plateau where you see the Mukurti and 
the, the silent valley all this you know is the vegetation map another important place is that uh, naduvattam paikara from the butterfly point of view i am talking and uh, gudalur pandalur bidarkad serambadi nilakota mudumalai tepakad karbudi masanagudi singara sigur to come up to the uti and uh, the eastern slopes this is the mountains which need to we need to scale on the north lies uh, the karnataka east is the coimbatore district south and west lies the kerala with this i shall get into the hot spots of the district looking at it from the eastern side we have the bhavani river and uh, the yellow patch which you see is the so called uh, kalar the hottest of the hot spots of butterflies there in the district politically lying in the coimbatore district but as it's uh, uh, it is in the foothills of the entrance of the district so was and it will and always be part of the district kalar that is the elevation and uh, almost all butterflies you could see there which you cannot see there you can see it in the western slopes that is how rich it is vegetation is very good it has got riparian tract and uh, at the middle elevation the district is can be approached via uh, kalar to kunur or uh, via kotagiri to uti kunur uti or uti that is how the land lies the first one was at the lower elevation kalar barlear is at uh, mid elevation that again has got very good uh, evergreen patches and it is still not very well explored punjapanai that was the hottest of the hot spot and uh, came to light uh, due to study of uh, mr larson in the 30 years back three decades back around 86 87 he spent six months coming back doing real hard research on butterflies of this region he has also made a paper on the migration of the guards butterflies in the guards manjur i have just put it as manjur actually manjur lies much above at 1500 700 meters elevation the lower elevation starts from the mulli junction the kerala mulli junction and it goes up to a reservoir called the gedai reservoir in between somewhere around 1000 meters that is the patch which is very very hot as far as butterflies are concerned in the southern side actually kunur and kotagiri uh, uh, lies on the south east side of the district and kotagiri uh, as i told you uh, from kunjapanai to kotagiri slowly the vegetation varies and as you reach kotagiri you can see all the high elevation species like the bush brown red eye bush brown nilgiri fritillary or the cabbage white and things like that so is kunur on the one side you could see one this red patch that is the gorge the moyar gorge it's one of the famous moyar gorge the in fact the migration happens even here it is a sight to see butterflies flying in this gorge it's a natural border which separates tamil nadu and karnataka as we go up we have lambs rock our own founding member senior mr charles is there and it has never been uh, mentioned anywhere in the history uh, of butterflies of the district but uh, we are proud and uh, uh, wba was the one which found out that that is a very hot spot at any given time you can from 20 to 100 species you could even the, at the richest of the season you can count up to 100 species in that locality and the beauty is that uh, we have cited even the low elevation species like psyche out there at a uh, lambs rock it's a very beautiful spot it is a cross road for migration butterfly migration as well then coming to the higher plateau we have dodabeta where our chief mr ramesh vira sits and uh, it is again a beautiful spot that is where the typical mountain grasslands and the evergreen 
your shola you can see ahead of it uh, as you go down you can see the silent valley you know and all that uh, pure uh, nilgiri mountain slopes it is yet to be explored uh, from the butterfly point of view though being at a very higher elevation these places are limited with uh, rarities i would say coming to the western side we have uh, from udi as you have to come down to the northern uh, side of the district this is the route which you take called the sigur ghat so from the higher elevation you come down a descent steep into the uh, table land called the uh, western slopes or the northern uh, plateau uh, the this is also this stretch uh, from uti to uh, down below this is also a typical uh, mountain grasslands with uh, scrub jungle and all the rest and uh, uh, mind you all the dryland species and uh, especially the uh, striata i believe uh, was uh, described from this uh, stretch and uh, we are happy to have rediscovered it as well as we come down through the sigur ghat you touch upon three small villages uh, people who have uh, had the opportunity to go through it uh, during our survey would know it is such a rich place where you can find all the dryland species and the road leads to the famous mudumalai tiger reserve one uh, big uh, ecosystem by itself our own uh, friend mr srk the uh, stretch uh, very long uh, study on butterflies of the this region and uh, we had the opportunity to go with them and uh, see these places it is a must see for any naturalist yes of course butterfly point of view many more things uh, are hiding in there i would say as we enter uh, the same uh, western slopes uh, via The, as i told you naduvattam and uh, paikara and all those places so those stretches also has got very good uh, vegetation which can be explored we come to another small area which will uh, take diversion as we enter godalo called o valley that again has got peculiar uh, landmass it, it is it has got one slope and the other one uh, faces uh, kerala the whole thing so that place is full of uh, plantations however there are also very good uh, marshlands mtr i forgot to tell you there is another beautiful uh, ecosystem called the wilds they call it it is a marshland called the wilds however in o valley the marshes are uh, the typical marshes it is yet to be explored in full nadugani the hottest hot if it is uh, kallar in the south it is nadugani in the west it is the tri junction which is the end point of the district which leads to kerala so from nadugani up to the end ermad or cherambadi it is a very good stretch which is high in butterfly fauna whatever you don't see in the southern slope you definitely see it in the western slope so with that i come to the hot spots of the nilgiris as far as butterflies are concerned out here you can see that in the map these are the higher elevations of uh, mukurthi and avalanche things like that coming to the species richness yes kalar is always the hot spot and uh, common banded peacock which uh, the name uh, is a misnomer is uh, seen there only in kalar and uh, except for two or three months it is uh, always seen throughout the year my friend vinod is a, a specialist of color i would say he is another founding member of the wba he has the full each and he knows each and every nook and corner of that a small uh, horticulture park it is open to public uh, that is a happy news all the other uh, places in the district you will have to get permission except if you are standing on the road and taking what is the why nobody is going to question otherwise it is it has got small small patches of uh, forest land so entering that is uh, not allowed as of uh, as per law so you need to get prior permission 
However, we have a solace in uh, Kallar. It is an article. To, uh, you can take your tickets and get inside and uh, spend the whole day enjoying the beauties. We have seen very many beauties. Until last decade, this uh, beauty, which was described from uh, uh, the Nilris in 1834, my dear gentlemen, 1834, ladies and gentlemen, 1834. A very rare uh, records were there, hardly one or two, that is it. And uh, uh, after 2010, and I would say butterfly knowledge of Nilris, or as far as India is concerned also, for that matter, has uh, improved tremendously. We started seeing it. Not only in Kalar, we see it in the district at mid elevation, we see it in the Eastern Guards. And uh, when we were talking about documentation, yes, that is how we come to know about it. A friend of mine, uh, Mr. Jeevit's friend, sitting in KMTR, sent him a photo asking what it is. And it happened to be the Neil Greek, it's surely you name it any place. It just, and very soon, with uh, all the enthusiasm, all the uh, butterfly enthusiasts and the citizen scientists all around the place, we should be able to know its early life uh, cycle as well. Yes, the infamous uh, yellow-breasted flat, it was there and it is there and it will be there, yellow-breasted flat from Kalar. When uh, Dr. Kalesh uh, informed me, I mean, when he was uh, giving an introductory remark to our survey, said that, uh, Know the same uh, thing when he heard from his class and go to color, go uh, look underneath the bridge, you see the yellow person flag. Uh, those were early days, four or five years back. And it came down, told Vinod, Vinod, please have a look. And it is there. And it was there. We saw it. And it's not only that, to our, to our surprise, when uh, we were walking along with uh, Mr. VKC in the uh, southern slopes uh, near about uh, Lambs Rock, and we happen to see it at a mid elevation too. So, is the orchid tit? It is being seen. It can be if you're lucky, you could sight it in color. We saw it when uh, Sharan came in uh, with his team from Rajapal, and we saw it. Yeah, we were lucky that was our first sighting in color. So, are these two species plain? You would know it is seen in the lower elevation at color and at mid, mid elevation up to. Uh, Barliar in uh, and above in the southern slopes and on the southeast again uh, in the Kunda uh, Gedai slopes you can see it as also you can see it in the Kunjapane up to mid elevation you can see that species so is the London Royal my friend uh, Felix is a great spotter a budding uh, naturalist is very good at uh, spotting and he happens to see many things and one among the beautiful species that's his picture actually it is the and at Royal. The pale four line blue, which was uh, historically seen only in the western slopes, WB is uh, very happy to see it in the southern slope as well. Libitia, this, this species requires uh, lots of study and uh, some more reclassification, I suppose. And uh, our own good scientists, Dr. Kunte, Dr. Kalish, and uh, others uh, from the Malabar region, or uh, I hope uh, they come up with clear clarification because we see it uh, from the lowest elevation up to the highest elevation, I would say that, uh, mid elevation rather, in the southern slope. Uh, in a plenty, we see the Malabar spot flat from the lower elevation to the mid elevation in the southern and the western slopes. So are the blue oak leaves. They feed uh, on uh, uh, Strobilanthus species, by the way. You all have heard uh, Dr. Kalish talking on Hesperidae. Both of them occur in the Nilgris. The Hampson sedge blue occurs in the western slopes and the straight striped, uh, yellow striped uh, hedge hopper occurs in the southern slope. The rarity indeed, both of them are, of course, the Hampson sedge hopper is not very rare in the western slopes, but yellow striped hedge hopper is rare in the southern slopes. This species, the king of uh, the Hesperidae, I would say, uh, was described by the way uh, from the Nilgri district in the year 1834 and a Frenchman called uh, Adolphe 
Dasal has visited India for five years uh, to collect uh, specimens of nature. He spent six months in the Nilgiri district and uh, he took uh, you know, very many uh, specimens of flora and fauna from the district. One among them were the butterflies. Yeah, you know, he had uh, taken near about after uh, I would say four or five uh, butterflies from this area, and uh, it was later on uh, described by others. So I'm happy that we were able to do its uh, life cycle through the help of uh, our friends across the border in the Kerala, Dr. Kalesh, Dr. VKC and thankfully even to Dr. I mean, Mr. VC, everyone for making us look deeper into it. Mr. Kalish, I mean, uh, Mr. Hanish, everybody. They all made us uh, look beyond uh, what you see and photograph about butterflies. The honor, the, as I was telling you that uh, Hansen was the first one who to uh, write a, a paper on butterflies in the Indian Greece. Over, uh, it seems a, a sad, a very beautiful manuscript because uh, the 10 volumes of uh, Lepidoptera Indica by uh, Moore, Frederick Moore, contains most uh, detailed uh, descriptions of many of the species, even to the location uh, level. You know, he it seems uh, Moore says that he has taken it from the manuscripts of Hampson. You know. This is in honor of him. It was described from the district again, straight at five ring. We, were, we are uh, proud and happy to have rediscovered it from the type locality. The only and uh, Nilgiri tiger from its uh, Nilgiri four ring from its type locality. You could see that uh, rocky slopes with uh, typical mountain grasslands. This is the area where it breeds. It is beauty and endemic beauty. Again, this was again taken by that uh, gentleman from uh, France and described as early as 1843. Another endemic from our place, the Nilgiri tiger, what you see on top, is on another endemic, Nila Kurunji. You would have heard of it. It's probably and uh, its early stage is still. A mystery. It has got a beautiful caterpillar as well. The Nilgiri tiger, the fritillary rather, Nilgiri fritillary. This again requires further uh, study, and I hope with all the wherewithal we have today, and uh, our seniors and uh, sci in the scientific fraternity like Dr. Kunte, we would uh, come up with lots of new clarifications and. Uh, classification of these species because there are very minor uh, variations and uh, we hope more light is thrown on it in near future and we have again had uh, the good opportunity of rearing it from its host plant called the viola this is another endemic beauty of my own place the nail race the clouded yellow nail gray clouded yellow and uh, we are happy that we were able to see that it has another force plan called the trifolium repens. It was with uh, Jeevit's efforts, we did the life cycle. For this species, we had to go length and breadth of the district in our early days. Carrying documentation, when you say, you have places mentioned like Wenlock Bridge or Victoria Bridge for that matter. It lies at the foothills of the uh, the other side, the Kunda slope, uh, Gidai slopes. I said that at the at the foothills lies the the Muli Junction is the Victoria Bridge. We came to know about it much later. Carrington is another place which is mentioned in history, even up to Dr. Kunti's paper and things like that. That is where this uh, species was seen, the red eye bush thorn, as also in the Longwood Shola in the in Kotagiri. It is. Uh, Longwood Shola is another patch of Battle and Shola in the heart of Kotagiri town. So we were running around 40 kilometers. Uh, SRK and self had gone time and again to Kinnakora and uh, you know to see the species for the first time. And uh, to get a shot on opening, it was <laughs> something uh, really 
wonderful for information this is the species which occurs north of it the one which occurs south of the palgat gap north of palgat gap south of palgat gap is, is called the red disc it has got different uh, morphological characters as well the state butterfly of uh, tamil nadu tamil yoman is seen from the lowest elevation to the highest elevation and it goes on to the western slopes as well this beauty as i was telling you charles was sitting there one day in his uh, resort and this beauty comes uh, and uh, presents itself on a cactus my friend went into his room took out this camera came and shot this beauty and i told him you have captured a jewel so that is how it is it is a very rare butterfly still seen it uh, uh, in color of course uh, by all of my colleagues and in the uh, uh, kothagiri slopes it was taken by my friend felix this is a speaker i think these other two species are also little enigmatic for that matter the i'll the tinsel common tinsel was uh, even larsen says it is not very uncommon in the hills except for the western slopes he had seen only once he has seen it in the catherine falls he says so we started searching for it and uh, we did see it. it not only on we have seen it in very many places after that so that is how it is if you have history we can follow it and we can discover and uh, rewrite history itself so was so is the other species called the onyx common onyx very rarely known in the nilgiri district till WBA started seeing it all over the southern slope from Lambs Rock. We took it uh, two years consecutively, and uh, the picture in 2016 was drawn by a great artist, tattooist from Mumbai called Savio de Silva. The dark piero was uh, mentioned only in the western slopes. Sorry, in the uh, southern slopes, uh, as Asan says, a colony is seen in the southern slopes. Yes, we did rediscover the colony. So did we see it in the western slopes as well. The mini-tailed oak blue is mentioned in history only uh, in the color uh, region. However, we saw it in the western slopes as well. It is never mentioned in the western slopes. That is another. This your might know is the last species to be described from the Nilgiris, the Nilgiri grass yellow. It is reported from the Devala, that is uh, western slopes. All these species occur in the western slopes, where it is, of course, in the Vayanad region, you see that. Otherwise, it is seen only in the western slopes. The mid is brown. Yes, you can see a plenty during season in the western slopes. And the cool uh, forest hopper is seen only in the western slopes. This was uh, another discovery by WA that uh, the silver streak acacia blue seen in the lower elevations. We happen to see it at mid elevation at the Kothagiri slopes as well. The missing jewel, I would say. Indas is abnormous. Somewhere in the early 1800s, even Hansen is not sure when, uh, you know, they mention only of one Mr. Lindsay. Early part of that century, a century, they say. Mind you, it was uh, described as species collected from Kunov. And a few species, a male collected. by Hampson himself. So it went missing and it is yet to be seen from the district. How well, we are happy that since the early part of this decade, we have seen it uh, occurring in the Maharashtra region and the Goa region. And this is uh, the photo of from uh, none other than Dr. Bakare. Look at 
from the green silver streak blue as well as the dark angle both of the species are rare and uh, it is met in the district and we were able to see both of them at mid uh, elevations too last but not the least the butterfly uh, after 130 years was rediscovered uh, during our survey after its first uh, description by hamster uh, the nilgiri plain ace during our survey in 2018 it just or uh, just uh, in continuation to dr kalish's uh, talk on uh, migration you all would be wondering how it is ha happening again thanks to the map prepared by uh, raj bhagat i took it from the net this is how the nilgiri is what happens the butterfly starts coming from the east and cross the nilgiri hills and go to the western slopes and towards kerala so what are these uh, red uh, spots i mean stars that is where our people are in dodapata sits our uh, senior chief veera ramesh veera in kunur uh, sits our friend uh, in kunur town proper sits my friend uh, franklin summa or in uh, uh, lands rock sits my senior talsnathan and in oti we have our friend uh, jeevit and we have our friends all over the place kotagiri we have others as well we have uh, mr uh, darman nanjan and other friends in japan we have contacts all these stars are contacts from uh, down south we have our senior and friend uh, vinod and uh, felix and, uh, uh, friends from other associations as well like uh, enbs act for b or uh, roar up uh, Uh, you know they start roaring from madurai uh, mr srk says from saptor he says guys butterflies have started moving so we are on the lookout as soon as the wind comes in and we are all on our whatsapp group and this is how we are located at least and uh, this is how the migration takes place just a glimpse and imagine the data or the potential we have to study about it so with that i come to my association yes we have uh, started it a few years back in 2016 we got ourselves registered and uh, revalidation we did of uh, quite a number of species like the onyx and uh, dark angle and the rest and engaging children i would like to mention here with the good uh, uh, support which we have of the dfo mr somesh soman right now present in the gurlor uh, area as the dfo he was uh, instrumental in uh, getting our uh, survey conducted in 2018 so once he asked us suddenly that uh, there is a school girl uh, from the 8th or 9th standard who is going to participate in a youth congress uh, in uh, trivandrum if you can do her uh, subject is butterflies if you can help her so myself and the jeevit went and uh, we took her and we did our grooming session you know, it was very good took her to the field showed her and uh, she had tremendous uh, we called capacity you know love for nature and the, she was a very bold and of course she didn't make it to the top but we were happy that we were able to help her and she would remember i suppose conducting walks we do conduct walks you know with the various stakeholders uh, apart from the butterfly survey 2018 uh, we did a small survey when uh, the gurlor uh, for the uh, department uh, they when they wanted to conduct a survey uh, birds and butterfly survey we did participate in that in full scale and uh, did a few classes to the stakeholders as well the department people schools yes we did uh, we do lot of uh, classes for the schools and uh, we did try to make a garden a butterfly garden in one of the schools and we are yet to pursue it in full scale we were uh, successful in to a certain extent but uh, we will pursue it definitely in days to come conducting surveys first ever official survey of butterflies of the 
Nelvis in October 2018, and we named it Larsen Memorial Butterfly Survey. We are very proud of that. Peer to peer interaction, yes. Our uh, friends across the state in Kerala, we have very good interaction in the social media as well as even at a personal level, I would say, was Karnataka. We all know each other very well. So we are happy that our contribution to science, yes, we did uh, publish papers, life cycles, uh, and uh, before I come to the end of this session, I would like to thank the organizers, Roar, Sharan Venkatesh, my dear friends from uh, Winter Blight Association. We have lady, Ms. Uh, Samantha Ayana, you know, always been shoulder to shoulder in all our efforts. Thank you, madam. And uh, my seniors, Ms. Charles and uh, Ms. Veera, I would like to thank my friends uh, Vinod, Jeevat, Franklin Sugumar, and uh, of course, Felix. And uh, I am ready to take on questions, Sharan, if there are any. Yes, sir. so you can stop sharing now. So before that, uh, okay, after that, uh, we'll start uh, taking questions. So if, if the participants, if you have any questions, please send in the chat window. So before I take in questions, uh, thank you so much, Manojana. It was really a brief and beautiful webinar on uh, <laughs> butterflies and geography of Nilgiris. Entire talk, I was in joy and smiling because of the known names and our fond memories with the architect. I still remember how we got to say it architect a couple of years back. Back to back five minute sightings of Orchid and Nilgiri and also last year during my visit to uh, Kerala, even that time I cited uh, Nilgiri So Kerala is my second home, a lot of you might know and it's a special hotspot in the state. So we'll take in question and answers. Uh, Manojan, I can stop sharing. You, you, will you just uh, stop sharing my screen please? Uh, no, no, only you would be able to do that. Uh, okay, very infamous decision, amazing decision. Truly, no doubt that it is the heaven of angels. Okay, Smithaka, I am unmuting you. Sorry, uh, I am unmuting everybody. Or let me unmute whoever is asking. Let, just wait a minute. Uh, Smithaka, I have unmuted. I have given permission to you. Yes, uh, hello Manojji. I don't have any questions. Just wanted to say hi and thank you for the wonderful presentation. And thanks Sharon uh, because I would have missed the session but for your message in WhatsApp. And thanks a lot. And I am hoping to come back uh, to Kothagiri soon and join you all again for the Kalar and uh, Lambs Rock trip at least this time. So we are all stuck in Chennai doing absolutely nothing in this place because of the COVID. And I think this session was really, really uh, nice. So thank you so much and thanks, Sharan. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. That was so <laughs> nice uh, hearing you after a long time. Yes, we are awaiting. Please do come down. <laughs> okay, we'll take in questions. So people, uh, if you have any questions, please send in the chat window or if you want to talk, just send in the chat window, I'll just unmute you so that you can uh, ask questions or share whatever you feel like, give feedback. Okay, we have a few texts. Thanks for Taslima from Jammu. She says, thanks for a beautiful session. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Strinka is saying, excellent session. Elizabeth, thank you, sir, for the wonderful session. Ganapati, very informative session. Uh, Supraja, amazing session, sir. Truly, no doubt that Neil Gris is a heaven for wing jewels. Uh, Rama Warrior from Bangalore, he says, wonderful presentation, Manoj. Uh, Nagaraj, sir, from BBC, he says, wonderful session, Manoj, sir. When is the next survey? Please let me know. Want to see Neil greet it. Thanks. Uh, we shall, we shall, sir. Yeah, even with or without uh, the survey, we shall. Uh, if you make yourself free, we shall try to accommodate you sometime or the other. And we let us go hunting. I mean, <laughs> we are all in the same boat. 
support <laughs> we'll, we'll keep seeing students okay next is vinayaka cs wonderful session any interesting migration observation stories from the region yes yes we did you know once we were asked by dr kalish you know to just follow the uh, uh, butterfly movement uh, by road you know uh, of course uh, it was uh, based on uh, larson's uh, uh, records that he did try to follow it uh, from the kothagiri up uh, to dimbam you know that was our aim too you know we wanted to do, do that but luckily we, uh, on another occasion we did uh, move from kunur this ha was happening for near about 2 3 days we knew that the next day morning see the migration happens as soon as the sun is bright somewhere around 9ish or 10ish slowly the momentum increases and it will uh, fade in by midday or afternoon so when as soon as we saw this migration movement on if you if you know as as i told you kunu is on top just a few hundred meters down below is a place called kateri that is the junction this migration hap doesn't come up to kunu and it would be going through that valley so we we all you know rushed uh, to through that uh, valley and we went to the dead end uh, on the southern side you know facing the uh, uh, kunda bridge you now we were standing there we were lucky enough at that time we were standing there this butterflies were moving to this was two years back exactly if i am not wrong uh, others may correct it i mean uh, so these butterflies were moving from our side to the gedai valley at that same moment we had people sitting you know we had our friend a pathologist nyaneshwar he is also in our group he was sitting in avalanche srk was sitting in uh, mtr we got three of us here and people were down below in the plains as well i had people in the mid elevation as well near barlia they were seeing butterflies flying on top the of their head we were seeing it going and we were following it we followed near about 40 kilometers across and we were sitting there and thousands thousands mind you were going for near about so many hours all of our friends we went there and uh, you know uh, even uh, yeah by the way uh, Ms. Veera was sitting in Dodabeta. He was also reporting. So it was a perfect uh, network. That was the first time we were able to do it. Also, after that, we are trying to pursue. That is one of our uh, very interesting, you know, observation as far as migration is concerned from our side. When everything was tic tac toe, now like uh, every angle it was covered, and people were uh, watching it from uh, beyond, uh, from the Vyanad side, and uh, Dr. Kalish was, you know, you know, everybody were monitoring. The seniors were monitoring it, and, and we were, we, I think we would have had very good record during that time. Anything else? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'll talk. So the next question is from Supraja. She is asking, sir, uh, this climatic condition of Nilgiris is also one of the primary advantages for endemism of several species. yes definitely definitely uh, 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 coupled with uh, climatic conditions i think the, the food source is also a major issue yes they are they do make a difference in endemism i have a feeling and uh, experts in the field might be able to elaborate on it definitely the cli uh, climatic conditions uh, all king for that matter it occurs uh, I, i we have a feeling it has only one road we don't know if it has got two road we, we have seen it only one road you know in our television so it definitely the climate makes a difference uh the next is from makesh kumar he is asking which month is the best to see lot of butterflies in color and apart from the garden what all the other spots in color to see butterflies see yeah uh, you would require a lifetime to finish the color articles of garden i would say what do you say <laughs> i hope uh, sharan would agree with me i mean it is there it is always there but it is not visible you know, the tiger is always there in and around our place they say that and uh, a dear for fars uh, ms uh, sumesh told us you put a trap camera you would know what moment is there you do not see the tiger the tiger sees you just like that i think even for the butterflies it is the same story applies 
See, you have not seen it. It has seen it. You and uh, if yellow breast flatter is there, many more interesting species are there. Let us just finish it. exploring them and uh, get into other areas. Yes, of course, you need to explore other avenues also, provided you have uh, enough permission and all the you know wherewithal uh, you can venture into getting into forest. Yes, it is a. Uh, it is. I advise not, not to get into any forest. Fringes is fine. On the road is fine, but. Uh, Never ever venture into forest events, and you will be penalized. That is what I say. Okay, so the next uh, question the months, is: as far as the months are concerned, pre-monsoon and post-monsoon are the best. Okay, so the next question is from Haradika Vijay. The question is: Is there any site in which we can refer this wing beauty and know about the species, especially from South region? site western eh, of course there are many uh, for facebook groups uh, butterflies of western guards we have our own butterflies of nilgiris we have other uh, many other uh, facebook groups you can uh, go in and of course the i found butterflies and uh, all the uh, citizen uh, science uh, data science uh, you know all those pages like uh, i naturalist or uh, any anything i found butterflies all these places you can see uh, Beauty is a specific to the region as well. If you browse through the pictures itself in iPhone butterflies, you would know, you know which region it occurs. I think it's as simple as that. Not there are books you can refer to as well. Okay, uh, so I don't think we have any more questions. So if if the participants, if you have any questions, please send in the chat window. We we'll just end in a couple of minutes if there are no questions. Okay, I feel there are no questions, so all the questions were answered. So uh, we'll end here, Manojana. Before we end, thank you again for uh, being part thank of you. the door talks for the Big Butterfly Month. Thank you. Thank you, Vivekan, for the good opportunity, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Talking about the butterflies and my own district. No sense. Thank you, everybody, for sparing uh, your valuable time to give an ear to me. All the very best, very best, and. Uh, Happy butterflying. <laughs> <laughs>